Hello, this is Rebirth of Legend here with um, one of the last parts of the Anti-Mage Guide. This is going to be a talk about late game itemization. Stupid. Uh, this is going to be talking about late game itemization. And, um, or, sorry, early game and late game itemization. I'm going to explain item progression on Anti-Mage. And for newer players to Anti-Mage, um, I take probably only take me about 10 minutes, maybe a little less, to go over basically the explanation of Battle Fury, Vlad's Manta, that progression, and the general timings. Uh, when to get Vlad's, when not to get Vlad's, when to get a Vanguard. A little so you want to vomit saying that. Uh, and things like that. Um, after that, I'm going to discuss um, variations that you can do. And talk about the different late game item options post Manta. Um, so let's start it off with why you build a Battle Fury. So, or why you build Treads first and then Battle Fury. So, in pretty much every single game, you should be buying. You should always be buying pretty much your uh, Treads first, and then you should buy a Battle Fury after that. And the reason why you always want to buy Treads first is because it gives you a. A lot of flexibility in in lane. So like, I will buy treads, buy battle fury, that's and buy manta. Buy this and that though, and buy TP. Game <sighs> starting anyway. At some point in doing the sheet. Okay, so what treads let you do is like hypothetically, if this lane gets contested, it lets you jungle pretty effectively. I probably shouldn't level myself to twenty five. But with Treads, Poor Man's Shield, and eventually a Ring of Health, or a Ring of Health first, or a Ring of Health even Poor Man's Shield, you'll be able to jungle pretty well. Once you get the Treads, though, the jungling will be significantly faster. What it also lets you do is Tread Switch. So that means you just go to Int Treads, you blink, you go to Agi Treads, or Strength Treads. Depending on if you're in a dangerous situation, you go Strength. If you're farming, you go Agi Treads. So I go Agi, or Int, back to Agi. And we'll show it again. Go to int, you go to agi. What this does is it makes it so when you use your blink, you're using um, a smaller portion of a larger mana pool. So when you're on int treads, you go up to 1000, so that's using about 6% uh, of your mana pool. When you're on agi treads, you have 900, which means you're using about 8% of your mana pool, I think. So you're using a smaller fraction of your mana when you tread the switch. You see, let's drop a region item. Let's see. See how this works exactly. Wish I could turn off regen. That's okay. It's three point six. We'll go to int. We're gonna be at about nine ninety eight here. And we're only missing about fifty mana there. You saw. So we saved about ten mana. Now that might not seem like the biggest deal, but when you're um, when you're early on, and you don't have regen like this. It is quite significant. Uh, to not waste, to save as much mana as you possibly can in between your blinks. Um, and even during, even once you have the Battle Fury, you're going to be at a lower level, so you're going to have less stats, so it's going to give you less region. You're not going to have 8 a second, where over the, the cooldown of blink, you're going to get back over half the mana cost. You're going to have probably something like 4, maybe 5 a second tops. I don't know the exact number. Um, so in between those blinks, when you're trying to mass farm out the whole map like this, you're going to run out of mana if you're not tread swapping. So if I were to just stay at brown boots and eventually get travels, I would run out of mana from the treads if I wasn't tread swapping. Um, this is mitigated a little bit with shrines, but that means you're using shrines and taking that away from your team, which isn't necessarily, it's not the worst thing. I mean, obviously you're on your team too, and what you do is important as well. There are situations where maybe you could find some way to justify skipping the treads, but they'd have to be like really, really niche to where it's like, I need travels as fast as possible because uh, I want to rat as much as possible. But even then, the treads help you farm so much that it might break even, but it's a bigger risk because if your lane gets contested, it's going to make your jungling a lot more difficult. Um, so that's why you want to get treads first, because if your lane gets contested, if three people come into your lane, it's going to make your jungling a lot better than just a straight Battle Fury Rush. Um, well, Brown Boots Battle Fury, or just Battle Fury Rush, which you don't really see too much anymore. You'll see a lot of people not get treads still, when treads are just really good. Generally, my timings will be about somewhere between 12 minutes and 30 seconds to 15 minutes for a Battle Fury and treads. 
in a variety of different games. You know, if I'm having like, the best game of my life, I'll have it around 12. If I'm having a mediocre game, I'll have it around like 14. If I'm having a terrible game, I'll come around 16. Um, <clears throat> and that's Battle Fury and Treads at the same time. And and straight Battle Fury rushes, you'll gen you're generally going to be quoted similar time frames for when people get them. Um, and this just opens up the flexibility and it allows you to harass enemies in lane a lot better as well. There's another video in the guide about harassing people, so or uh, playing aggressive in your lane, and the treads help a lot with that, so you can refer back to that. Um, On to the Battle Fury. Why do you build a Battle Fury in Anti Mage? Anti Mage is the pinnacle of split pushing. There is no hero who pushes quite as hard as an Anti Mage, with the exception of like, with the exception of a Naga Siren who can push more lanes at the same time, but it takes her longer to do it. Once you have your Battle Fury and your Blink Max, you're a split pushing machine. Um, and it's gonna be very hard for the enemy team to deal with that. And the Battle Fury is what lets you creep. Like, watch this, I don't even, I don't have, I'm level 25 right now. So I didn't get this, I don't, didn't even one shot that. Took me a while to kill that. Four swipes on that. I could clear out this whole thing if I position correctly with three or four right clicks from a Battle Fury, with a Battle Fury. And it took me about 12 to 16 hits to kill all that without the Battle Fury. Without the Battle Fury, you're going to have the ability to blink to the creep waves and get there quickly, but it's going to take you forever to kill it. So it kind of like, it kind of enables AM to do what he was designed to do. Like, if, I couldn't think of a hero who has an item better designed for them than making, like, Anti-Mage with, like, Manta or something, or Medusa with, like, a Divine Rapier. Just because it plays to, like, his strengths so much, where you just need to split push and farm. Without that Battle Fury, or, which we'll talk about later, possibly a Maelstrom or a Mjolnir, you're really just not going to, um... Now, I'm probably going to separate those in two videos, because I have a recent game I think I have a replay of. Anyway, um, you're just not going to be able to farm to the degree you want. Like, even look at this. Like, trying to clear Ancients without... Oh, shit, I got the Battle Fury on. Trying to clear Ancients without a Battle Fury, it's going to take you forever. This camp should be cleared out in, like, four seconds, five seconds, maybe six early on or something. And then you're on to the next camp. Instead, I spent probably ten seconds here, which is almost twice the amount of time it took. And that's also because I'm hyper-level, and I have, like... Every, every freaking ability that's going to make me farm quicker. In an earlier laning phase, that's not going to make a difference. So a real thing that a lot of people are going to struggle with is when to buy a Vlad's, when not to buy a Vlad's. I defer to almost always buying a Vlad's, and with the exception of two circumstances. Uh, one is that I'm behind. If I'm behind, then I'm going to have to get a battle. Or, 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 or sorry, that's pretty much the, pr the precursor to the second condition. If I'm ahead, getting a Vlad, even if they have silences, getting a Vlad's first is going to enable me to farm the Ancient, it's going to enable me to push a lot harder, and it's going to just increase your farming rate a lot, and it's going to allow you to man, fight, and trade people very effectively. Vlad's is always, always good, as long as you don't think getting it's going to cause you to die one time. If I think if I think I can get away with getting a Vlad's and it's not going to get me killed, I'm going to get a Vlad's. If I think I need a um, Manta very, very quick, um, then I probably, then I'll probably skip the lads entirely, or maybe I'll just get a headdress. I think it was Arteezy who kind of popularized, just going headdress, um, headdress into Manta and not finishing the Vlads. And the rationale behind that is that what the, what the uh, Vlads does is it helps you push. Just giving a little regen to your creeps will also give them an, an additional tower shot that can survive. And the additional regen you'll get just from having a headdress will also allow you to sustain your HP a lot better. From creep camp to creep camp. So it's like 1200, 1700 less gold, or 1700 more gold to go from just a headdress to a full Vladimir's offering. Um, so if you're in a game where it's a little intense, you can either skip the Vlads entirely or just go for a headdress. Now, let's say if I'm laning against someone like a Darkseer, which, which is a lane AM does pretty well against. But the harass you take from a Darkseer in a straight 1v1 is pretty significant. Um, so in that case, you might want to get a ring, of, a ring of Health and the Headdress. Give you that extra regen to kind of sustain through all the Iron Shell damage you're going to be taking. Because at the end of the day, you're still a melee hero against a Darkseer. Even with high levels and Spell Shield, he's going to hurt, and he's going to hurt a lot. Um, 
So let's say you're in that lane where you're not getting as much as you want and they have like a Quap or a Storm who's Orchid rushing to really just bring the herd on you because let's say it's like a 4 protect one, you're the only one. Everyone else is doing kind of iffy. And i say Storm is probably a little scarier than a, than a Quap. You can kind of outplay a Quap, but a Storm is just going to get on you and stay on you. And his initiation range is much longer. Like a Storm can come here and initiate on you from there. A Quap's going to have to do two, maybe three blinks to clear that distance. So I'd say the Storm is a much bigger threat, but if you see that Storm rushing an Orchid, you're having an okay thing, and you got the headdress anyway, it's okay not to finish the Vlads, even against someone like a Darkseer or whatever, and then just rush the Manta, because that Manta's going to let you survive that jump from the Storm, and maybe even turn around and kill him, and something that would otherwise cause you to die. The Vlads can help you survive a little, but if that Storm is balling out of control, is having like a 16 minute Orchid or something like that, Treads Orchid, and he's just looking for you. He's just looking to start a fight. You're gonna, you're gonna struggle, and you're gonna struggle a lot against it. And even if you, even if he fucks up, blows his whole mana pool on you, and just gets the mantle off, and then man fights you and gets maybe one overcharge, he still might be able to kill you because he's gonna be super high leveled as well. Um, that's an explanation of what Vlad's uh, when to skip Vlad's. I think, I think the question is more like. Should I skip Vlad's this game, or is this, as opposed to, is this a Vlad's game? Because you should be getting Vlad's in probably 90% of the games. If I'm against a Shadow Fiend, if I'm against anyone who has armor down, I'm 100% getting that Vlad's, even if they also have some silences on their team. The silences just make it so you have to play a little safer in the interim, but if they have that armor down, the Vlad's is going to help you and your team and everything you do by, by a whole margin. Because a, a huge thing that Vlad's brings out in you is the ability to just walk up to an enemy carry and outtrade them. Um, that's something a Vanguard's not going to let you do, because a Vanguard does not heal as quick. And that's something, um... Oh, man. That's something... Oh, I lost my train of thought. So, uh, okay, so the Vanguard has a static heal, while this is lifesteal plus a static heal. And the, the static heal, or sorry, the, the lifesteal itself is going to make you regen massively when you're jungling camps. So a brief, a brief talk about Vanguard... I would never say to get Vanguard first, and the only time I'd say it's okay not to is if you're having a really... I've done it in this situation where I had a really rough lane against the Timbersaw, who went 1 one four. Then My team put me against a 6k Timbersaw, solo as an anti-mage, he had the time of his life. The problem is, when, he, when Timbersaw has his maxed armor stacks, he can just sit there and he'll right-click you, he'll sit in your tower and right-click you, he'll sit in your creep wave, he'll sit in the triple creep wave and he'll right-click you. He'll sit wherever he feels like and he'll right-click you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, in that case, just having a poor man shield and a ring of health is not enough. It is not enough to regen you with the amount of damage you're taking from that timber saw. Even if he has no mana, he can just right click you and his damage isn't significant. But it's so constant and so irritating that I had to get a vanguard in a game like that. And because a poor man shield and ring of health just was not enough to deal with them. The other, the other way is if you're, and all, all these situations are going to be when you're behind. That's it. It's only when you're behind. Let's say you're getting hunted down by. Um, Let's say you're really behind and you're getting hunted down by people with huge nukes. Having that extra mana that a vanguard is going to give you, or the extra health, not mana, just 250 health, if that's going to prevent you from dying once, it can probably pay for itself. Maybe twice. But, um, it's also going to put back, the way you have to think about it is, like, is it going to prevent me from dying, and is that saving me from dying going to ensure me and my ability to get more farm? Like, that's your goal in buying the vanguard. Because if I get a Battle Fury, it's going to make me farm two, three times as fast as that Vanguard is, you know? And what that Vanguard does is set back your Battle Fury timing. That's why you have to rethink it. Oh, another thing, I saw Owie do it once against a Broodmother, which was pretty cool. He, like, 1v1 to Broodmama and then rushed a Vanguard, so the Brood couldn't really kill him, like, at all. <laughs> which is pretty funny. Because the Spiders don't do any damage once you have, once you have that, that Vanguard. And it gives you the extra HP to survive her nuking power. So th that was pretty cool. Um, if, like, let's say there's a Wind Ranger who's out of control, but doesn't. Uh, the Vanguard mitigates a huge amount of her damage because a Wind Ranger uh, has her damage basically halved when she uses her ult until she has an Axe. And that's going to give you a huge block percent that's going to basically block almost all of her damage. Um, so. The Vlads is pretty much any any single game where you're not really far behind and need a Manta. The uh, 
a headdress is if you need the extra regen in lane before a battle fury, and then and get a Vlad's if you you can justify in the game. If the enemy team has armor down and doesn't have silence as their direct threat to you, then you get the Vanguard. Um, or sorry, then you get the Vlad's. I misspoke. You get a you get a Vlad's if they have armor down, and you get a Vlad's if um, you're having a good game. Um, and if you're kind of behind and you need to purge a silence, then that's when you skip the Vlad's and you get a Manta. The only time you get a Vanguard first is when, um, like, Go Treads Vanguard is when you need it to survive and you're, like, desperately far behind. Most of those games are probably going to be lost anyway, but if you can draw the team onto and live a couple of times and just waste enough of their time, that can sometimes be enough to pull you back into a game. Um, that won't always be the case, but uh, just building a Vanguard by at first by default makes it so you have to play really aggressive to justify it which like i said the battle fury and anti mages blink it doesn't really play into a skill set to play really aggressive like if you want to go fight pick a juggernaut you know that's not am central purpose um so I, I want to explain that three uh those three itemizations and how how to choose between uh lads manta and um or how to choose how to get Vlad's Manta and Vanguard, and then explain treads early on and why you buy a Battle Fury, just for people who didn't quite understand why you see anti just build Battle Furies all the time. I was going to make it all one video, but I feel like I want to actually pull up a replay for the next one to explain a uh, the other itemizations. So we'll, so we'll end this on saying, if you have these three items, you're pretty you're in pretty good shape as an anti-mage. Um, and the next item you're pretty much always going to want to get in, I'd say, 95% of games, 98% of games, is going to be an Abyssal Blade. What the Abyssal Blade opens up your ability to do is solo kill and push all over the map. The alternatives would be if you had, like, Magnus and Power, you might want to get a Battle Fury because Magnus's power works off base damage. Or, sorry, did I say Battle Fury? I meant to say a Butterfly. Um, you might want to get a Butterfly because that will give you agility while well, this doesn't give you this gives you some bonus damage or sorry what the fuck there it is a skull bash or abyssal blade will give you some raw some raw damage but it won't actually give you any stats uh butterflies gonna give you 35 agi which is going to increase uh, 35 agi 30 damage 30 attack speed and then with like empower you're going to get another 17 18 damage and it synergizes really well with that um Another situation where if you just really need to survive and they're grouping as five or whatever and you're not ever going to be able to get a solo pickoff, then you should buy a heart. And that heart makes it so it's very, very hard for the enemy team to kill you. The hell am I not clicking? The heart makes it so it's very, very hard for the enemy team to kill you because you're going to have very high physical and magic resist. You always have 60 and 60% in both categories right now. It's going to be very, very hard for the enemy to kill you. And in conjunction with that, if you chose to get a heart, you could probably skip an Abyssal and go for a B-Fly and just go for the tankiest you can be. Because with the B-Fly's evasion, it's going to be very helpful. But in most situations, the Abyssal's going to be the superior option because it opens up that solo pickoff potential. And you really just want to, you really, really want to split push as AM and open up those windows. And the other videos will explain exact, the other videos explain exactly how that's done. The other videos will have explained uh, why you, uh, how you play the slip pushing game and everything. That's outside the scope of this one, but um, but yeah. So pretty much, when in doubt, buy the Abyssal Blade, and then you can get Butterfly after that. You can get Heart. You can get whatever, whatever else you think is needed for the game. But this should be pretty much your first yeah, four to five items, however you want to count that, in ninety five percent of games. Um, for the skill tree, uh, I don't know if I discuss this in another video, we'll go over that quickly. Uh, if you think the 150 health is going to save you, you get it. The 20 damage is if you're having a good game, you want to farm more, get the 20 damage, it's going to help you farm a lot quicker. 20 attack speed affects your illusions, you pretty much get that in the most of games. I haven't played with the 1 second blink cooldown, it could be okay. I think it was bad when it was the level 25 ability. I think it's probably pretty okay at 15. I could see an argument for either one. The big issue I think is when you're using that... Talent at level 15, you're going to run out of mana even quicker. But there are times where you are going to be sitting at a creep camp saying, man, I wish my blink was up, and you had to wait an extra second or two. And in those cases, you'll be really happy you got that. I can see level 15 going either way, um, for which is good. I personally get the 20 attack speed because I think 
uh, since your illusions get the 20 attack speed, it's going to help you get more solo kills. And pretty much all this is about survive building getting solo kills. As for level 20, you pretty much always want to build a butterfly. You don't want to get redundant evasion, unless there's some reason you need to get everything except the butterfly, then maybe you'd want to get, let's say you're against a PA and a Wind Ranger, so you need an MKB. But you also need some tanking, like a Scotty or a Heart, then you'd get the 15% evasion. That way you always have that, so they're required to carry MKBs. Otherwise, the 10 stats is going to be better if you're in a game where you're getting a butterfly. It's just going to generally tank you up and make you do a little more damage, give you a little more armor, give you the best of everything. Um, the Mana Void cooldown kind of syncs it with your Abyssal Blend, which is nice. Um, but I think the 25 Agi, once again, goes back to this is going to help you split push more. This is going to help you get more solo kills. The odds of me getting two Mana Voids off in a fight, even with 20 seconds... Is not too high. I'm gonna blink in. I'm gonna man to someone. I'm gonna blow them up. Maybe if I went, at, maybe if I just solo killed someone and then I wanted to go back in, I, I could see it being okay. I just, I just prefer that thing that's gonna guarantee you the one kill. Because if you get the one kill, then the other kills are gonna fall in line. A 50 second man avoid cooldown is not really gonna be that relevant when I get the one pick off already. You know. And that's what the 25 agility is going to help you get. Because it's not increasing the anavoid damage, it's just making you use it more frequently. And if it's not getting you a kill, what does it matter? If it was like a 5 second cooldown where I could use it to break a Lincoln's, then abyssal someone, then it would be good. 50 seconds just isn't enough in many situations. So um, that's going to close out this section I'm talking about itemization. In the next video we're going to talk about uh, if you should buy an Agadem Scepter. And I'll explain in what situations it could be decent in and what position I would probably buy the item in. Um, uh, how Ags is versus Lincoln's is still an argument. Ags is not necessarily better than a Lincoln Sphere. They serve different purposes. I'll talk about potential games where you can get a Mjolnir instead of, an, instead of a um, Battle Fury. It's a little clowny, but it can be very effective when combined with different itemizations. And I guess we'll talk, yeah, whatever. Watch the video if you want to see what else I come up with to talk about. But those are gonna be the general two things. Thank you for watching, I hope it helped.